Hey, this is Esther with Discover Your Origins. In this video, we're going to take a look at the 1950 U.S. Census. A census is released to the public 72 years after it was taken. So the 1950 census is the most recent that has been released to the public. The census was taken April 1st, 1950. So that means it was released on April 1st, 2022. And it was released to a very eager public that was very excited, especially genealogists, to see the census. Ancestry and Family Search obtained copies of the census on midnight of April 1st of 2022. Ancestry and Family Search collaborated in developing artificial intelligence software to index the census by computer. And it was pretty amazing to see how quickly they were able to index. So people looked at the index that was created by computer and corrected it. But for the most part, the index was fairly accurate that was created by computer. And because they used the special software that they invested millions of dollars in, they were able to release the census within weeks of its release day, uh, which was pretty amazing, really. And very exciting to gain access to those records so quickly. The 1950 U.S. Census also brought about other technological innovations, even in the 1950s. So here I have a picture of the UNIVAC-1, which was a computer used to help process the census in 1954. So they had some mid-decade census work that was being done. The statistics and everything on this particular computer are available at Wikipedia, where it talks about the specs. But you can see here it used real reels, it had a huge control board, and it probably took up a whole room. Still pretty amazing. Obviously, the technology has evolved significantly since then. And of course, computers have been used since the 1950s to process census data. And this was the first time that the government used computers for something other than non-military use, which of course is still going on today. Technology is really starting to take hold on our abilities to look and analyze and use historical records. And the software that was developed for the indexing of the 1950 U.S. Census is starting to be used to index other records. Obviously, some records are going to be much more difficult, and so it's a work in progress, but it is moving faster and faster um, as far as the types of records being made available uh, through indexing, which really opens the gateway to the access, making them more available to researchers. So what else about the 1950 U.S. Census that is unique? Uh, statistical sampling continued to happen, and you know there was also an increased effort to improve accuracy in the census count. So let's go and look at the Family Search Research Wiki. And if we scroll down, we get a list of the different types of forms that were used. There was several different forms for different types of populations and schedules. There was an agricultural questionnaire. There was a landlord tenant operations questionnaire. There was a infant card for children born between January of March of 1950. There was merchant marine report and again special population schedules uh, the housing questionnaire i mean so lots of different things that were collected here and this this family search research wiki article is fairly detailed on all of the questions that were asked there wasn't any unique questions but the questions that were asked were a little bit more specific so if we looked at the individual census for example it asked were you living on a farm a year ago? What was the highest grade of school you have attended? And did you finish this grade? So the questions were a bit more specific, but the types of information that was gathered was similar. The statistical sampling, they increased that. So there was more people selected for additional supplemental questions. So the likelihood that one of your ancestors was selected is higher in this census versus the previous one. And like I said, here's the information on the infant card. So the purpose of the cards were to study or compare the number of infants registered at birth and not enumerated against those enumerated and not registered. 
So they were trying to make sure they caught all of the children that were born because babies are often missed in censuses. All right, so if you have any particular questions about the questions, the forms that were used, um, this article here is a really fantastic resource for that. Let's go and look at the statistics. So the Wikipedia article that talks about the statistics just gives a very general overview of the 1950 census, but the statistics are interesting um, for the population changes. The overall population increased about 14.5% to 158 million and plus people. The most populous state was New York and Nevada was the least populous. If we scroll down, we get a map again that shows that the migration from the Midwest continued into the 1950s and the biggest population growth was in the West of the United States. There was a little bit on the East Coast into Florida and DC, but if we scroll down through this chart, which shows the population comparisons between 1940 in 1950, we see some pretty interesting things. So for example, California increased 53% in population, which is tremendous. Uh, Alaska, if I can find it here on the list. Alaska increased 77%. So it was a low po lower population state compared to others. But you can see in 1940, it was 72,000 people and it increased to 128,000. Alaska is a large geographic area, is still a low population area, but that was still a pretty tremendous growth. You can see Nevada just right above that increased 45%. Arizona increased 50%. Oregon, 40%. So still the western united states really blossomed in growth uh, in the 19 between 1940 and 1950. there was a couple of states that continued to see a population dec decline that includes oklahoma here and mississippi and arkansas and so they were still economically depressed areas of the country they were still trying to recover from the dust bowl and that agricultural disaster that had occurred there so there was still that migration away from the central uh, United States. If we go to the city rankings, and you can see here New York City, Chicago, and Philadelphia are the top three, but Los Angeles and Detroit also really grew in population in between 1940 and 1950. So a huge chart here for a particular city, um, you can see Unfortunately, it doesn't have the comparison between 1940 and 1950, but it's still, you can gather probably the place where people who were moving between states, where they were moving to. So likely they were moving to Los Angeles area versus other parts of Los, of California. So interesting, uh, the Wikipedia page is a good place to go for just a summary if you want more detailed uh, statistics, you can go to the Census Bureau website and look for it. There are some links in the Wikipedia article for additional statistical information. Let's look at somebody that was in the 1950 census. So we're going to look at John Henry Eaton, and this will be the last time that we'll be able to look at him in a census record. John Henry dies in 1956, and so this is definitely the last time that we'll see him. If we scroll down, his wife dies in 1973. So we should see her in two more census records as those censuses become available. And then as far as who we'll see in the census, we're just going to primarily look at the John Henry family and who's living next to him. But William Henry is living somewhere else. And then we'll see Charlie and John Hubbard and then Gracie. And we'll see what they're doing in 1950. So let's go take a look. The form itself is a little bit different. And because the questions that were asked were a bit more specific, there's the headers at the top of the columns are a bit bigger because they're explaining more information. And then at the bottom of the census, we have the supplemental 
area where people were selected. So you can see about every four, about every five people or so is a person selected for additional questions. And I was one of the fortunate ones in that John Henry was one of those people that was selected. But let's zoom in and let's see who's here. So we have John Henry, he's 68 years old, and Hadi, who's 65. And it gives their ages, their place of birth as far as states. And then also in the household, we have Charlie, who's 42 years old at this point. And Herbert, or John Hubbard, he's 39. They're both still living at home. And then in the household is Mary L. Smith, who is Hottie's mother, and she's also in the home, and she's 88 years old. If we slide the census to the, the right, uh, this column, column 15, asks if this person has worked. So the question is, what was this person doing most of last week? Working, keeping house, or something else? And then there's the abbreviations of work, WK, H, and there's a U. Anyway, there's, there's explanations. So uh, John Henry is marked with a U, which means he was unemployed. And Hottie was home. Charlie was unemployed and Herbert was at work. And then there's uh, Mary L. Smith's was blank. So John Henry, 68 years old, he's probably not really working anymore. He's not looking for work. He's retired at this point. And of course, so is Mary L. Smith, who's 88. Hottie, she's pretty much retired as well, but she's still keeping house. Herbert is the only one that's working. And it, he's, it says that he's working... Uh, and shipping for the aluminum plant. And if we were to go down and look at the supplemental questions for John Henry, and it's highlighted in yellow here, talks about his education levels, whether he was working at all. And then this column here, which looks like Thirty two A asked last year, nineteen forty nine, how much money did his relatives in this household earn working for wages or salary? So it wasn't asking about his specific salary because he didn't earn anything last year, nineteen forty nine, but his household earned twenty two hundred dollars. And if we were to look at this up at the census again, Herbert is the only one that's working. So Herbert is basically supporting the family financially at this point. And $2,200, even in 1950, is not a lot of money. Uh, so they were still struggling financially and just hanging on. All right, if we look next door, we have Henry Allen and Gracie. So this is Gracie, who's the daughter of John Henry. And she's married, she's got a couple of kids. And they're living right next door. And Henry, he's working and he's working as a chemical engineering superintendent, maybe, for the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. So, some government funded or supported project. So, he was working and then. Um, they, he, they were probably also helping the John, John Henry Eaton's family. They were probably both working together to, to survive. And Henry also was sampled. So we can go down and look. He's just below. So Henry completed 12th grade. And he was working. So he worked 52 weeks last, the last year. And he made... $2,100 approximately. So he was earning some money and he was also a World War II vet. And John Henry has this box checked where it says he was a World War II vet. And as far as we know, he never served. He would have been too old. He was in the older man's draft uh, for World War II. 
So we're not sure why that is checked. But um, anyway, we do know Henry was a World War II veteran. So let's go back and look. So there's not much more to say about John Henry Eaton and his family at this point, other than we know that they were struggling financially, but they were still there in Florence, Alabama, um, living together and supporting each other and just trying to survive. So let's go back and look at John Henry's memories. This is a picture of John Henry in his older years. Not sure when this picture was taken, but probably in his 50s or 60s. And if we go back, we have this picture here, which was also probably taken around the same time in the 50s or 60s. And you can see, I think they're probably wearing their Sunday best here. Um, who knows? And this looks like probably the house on 309 Trade Street as well. But that's John Henry and Hottie Lou standing in front of their house. So it's been fun looking at the John Henry family through the census records. And I hope this is something that uh, you'll take a look at with your family and try to find them in every census record that you can because it helps to fill in bits and pieces about their story. Um, this is John Henry Eaton in 1950. And I hope that was helpful. We'll see you next time.